<laughs> Good job. It's like the Vanna White of the group. Go, there man, you go. I go. <laughs> Good evening. This is, we're just laughing. We have to do we, we don't know what to say for it. It's been so long. Mary Ann forgot her line. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. This is what's new with Jean, ours, and myself, Mary Ann. And we are pleased to be here. For a change. Happy to be back, for sure. Yeah. And we have our city ministry with us tonight, and we would like to hope you all enjoy us and hope you are all safe and going by the guidelines and hope everything comes out all right for now you Now be sure to put those masks on. Yes, wear them. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll okay. let ours take over. Please. Okay, so as Marianne said, we have our city administrator, and he's sort of new to the territory, so if you want to introduce yourself and you can tell them whatever you want to tell them. Oh, that could be dangerous. Oh, no, that's okay. At least I'm, well, we're doing our six foot distancing here. We so. are, except, well, except we're a little bit cold, <laughs> that's okay. We stay, we're locked in, so ah, we're okay. 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 <laughs> we're so old, it really doesn't make me. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not the, no. no, no. I don't get out. <laughs> Well, we're on lockdown. <laughs> okay. Uh, so my name is Happy Welch. Uh, I moved here back in April. Martin Toma announced he was going to retire late last year, uh, and that had been advertised. I had submitted an application and luckily worked my way through the process and uh, had a chance to start in April. Started a little sooner because of the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, Martin had to stay home because he was of an age, the doctor said, oh, okay. you know, you're, you're, you need to stay home. You don't need to be out. So with you people. didn't need to get to get broke in? Uh, <laughs> I, got, I, got a, I got one good half a day of training. And, and the rest of it's been, the rest of it's been a lot of phone calls. Okay. It's like, I hope, I hope you're not napping. I hope you're not playing golf. Uh, I hope you're, you know, just sitting there, you know, taking it easy. So, but he's, uh, he's been helpful, very helpful as have, has the board and staff and everybody. So. Uh, so I started in April, and I and I know I you know stepping into something that's you know when you have some uh, disaster like that or some issue, it, it was a whole different atmosphere to step into. Oh yes. Uh, with how how people you know were reacting, how how we were meeting, how we were meeting. Uh, so I had a little place I was renting up on North Third Street, so I'd walk to work every day. Well, so I'm walking in our the downtown area. And that, that's not a quiet place. It's usually fairly bustling, a lot of things going on with the courthouse and the businesses and the restaurants, and it's quiet. Just, you know. It's, it's scary. scary. <laughs> it's really scary. Yeah, it was like ghost town quiet. Of those movies, uh, the scary ones <laughs> where the people <laughs> hide out. <laughs> Nobody shows up. Yeah, yeah so it, it's taken, but it was kind of nice because, you know, and then I got acclimated working with staff and getting acclimated. You know, you know, finding out what's in the office, moving furniture around, just kind of getting settled in. Uh, and now it's to the point where we have things like this, where I get out and I get to meet people. You know, we're, we're, we have our meetings and, and people are getting together. Right. Doing the social distancing, everybody's right. staying apart uh, or wearing their masks or whatever, but it's, it's now a chance to get to meet people. And so I think it worked out well in that respect. It was just trying to decide how we were going to react to the COVID-19, come out of all of the, right. uh, the shutdown, the stay-at-home orders, the shelter in place, and, and work our way into where we've got a normal society again. Um, and it's been a slow process. Nobody's dealt with this. Right. Uh, luckily, I've yeah. got other city administrators that are friends, and it's like, how is your city reacting to this? What are you guys doing? What's your length of time? What are you seeing that we need to do? And that was very helpful. So I think we've followed the right path. I think uh, St. John County has has shown that with the numbers that have been that have been fairly good. Right. Uh, the city has done its part to try to, to promote the right things, and you know we, we shut down for a while. We closed bathrooms. We closed the welcome center. I mean we we did what we needed to do. Now we're starting to get things started up again. Now when I walk downtown, there's activity. There's cars. It's <laughs> bustling. The courthouse is busy. Uh, people are shopping. <clears throat> Restaurants are open. Yes. Uh, you know, people are, are greeting each other. It's it's nice to see. Uh, one thing we found that uh, we've been lucky as a community. We have not been hit hard in the way of, of tax loss right. for income on the city. Uh, some of the cities that I know, 
have had to shut down. Or not shut down, but they've had to furlough people, they've had to lay people off, they've had to uh, close different departments. Uh, so that's, they, but they've shut down different departments like tourism in, in some of the bigger cities because they don't have the tourists. Right. They don't have that, that income stream that they had before. We've been lucky. We've, we've held out pretty well. Uh, we've held off on some of our major purchases and we'll look at that carefully still when we get into the new budget year, which we're, we're starting that process. Uh, so working with the board, um, they've been cooperative, easy to work with. Uh, very involved. Uh, this is the first first uh, community that I've had where they really they really wanted to be involved in everything and all right. the decisions. Uh, have a little information. Try to make the informed decision, um, and try to you know be a part of every every process that we're doing to make sure we're doing it right. Uh, we, you know, we we feel like we're doing things correctly, and, and I think Martin Toma put us on the right path. Uh, but there's always room to grow, get better. Uh, and we're we're getting along in that in that uh, in that area and, and, and working through it, mm -hmm. uh, getting to know each other. Um, so I have I, a, a, probably a rather stupid question, but I hope you'll forgive. What does a city administrator do? So you have a board of aldermen that oversee the city as elected mm -hmm. officials. So I am not elected; I'm appointed. And what I am is the professional person that comes in every day, eight to five, and oversees what goes on in the city. So if your toilet's flush and your water runs well and you have smooth streets, we're working on some of those, th that's my job is to make sure those, those operations function properly. Mm -hmm. If you go out to the parks, you know, they're, the grass is cut, it's trimmed, things are maintained. I'm here every day to oversee every department and say this, these are the things that need to be done. Wow. So the board comes up with the ultimate decision. They make um, the policy that we follow. And one of the big policies is our budget. This is how much money we can spend. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to spend this in certain departments and on certain large items. <clears throat> so my job is to make sure that we spend that correctly. Uh, and, and if there's a problem, if there are issues, then I take that back to the board and say, we have to readjust this. How do you want to do this? What is your feeling on this? You're the ones that are elected by the, the general public. The citizens have told you what they want. Now relay that. Uh, and it may be you know, different information from different wards since we have the four wards in the city. But my job is to just make sure that every day we follow what we're supposed to follow and I'm you know, the, just the chief supervisor. The mayor is like your chief executive officer, um, and then your board is your board of directors. And I'm, I'm here just to make sure that uh, we spend things correctly, we don't, we don't spend it on crazy things, uh, that everybody does their job, they do it properly. Um, and, and yeah, it's, so I, and I've done this for about 14 years, uh, three other cities besides St. Genevieve. I was up in Peabody, Missouri for five years. Uh, Festus, Missouri for five years, and then in Harrisonville, Missouri, south of Kansas City. I did it there for two and a half years. Uh, is that where you came from? Kansas so, City? Uh, originally, originally I, was, so I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, my father was Air Force, so he was eventually stationed at McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita. Uh, we ended up staying in Winfield, Kansas, which is where I grew up. Uh, at that 17, I graduated from high school and said, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going somewhere. Uh, so I ended up going to Wichita State uh, and got a bachelor's degree. And then from there on, I've lived in Indiana, Kentucky. And then we ended up in, in Festus, Missouri, because after 10 years of being away from home, my wife decided that she needed to be close to home. So her home is DeSoto. Oh, okay. Oh. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she wanted our daughter to grow up near grandma and aunts. And it's like, all right. So we ended up locating in, in Festus. Uh, and we ended up there for about 25 years. So we had left Festus for the job that I took in Harrisonville. Um, wanted to go to a different part of Missouri and, and, and kind of experience a different area. Uh, it was kind of close to home. And it was, there's nobody there. My family doesn't live there anymore. We're, we're spread all over the US. <laughs> But it was a chance to at least, you know, kind of experience another large city like Kansas City, which is, you know, pretty much on the go and had a lot of things going on. Uh, thought it would be a good place to be. 
it just didn't work out. Uh, then you moved to this little town where there's hardly nothing to do. <laughs> you know, you, people but say there's that. there's always something to do. There's always something. But it's not as busy as, like, the cities are. No, yeah. no. But, it's, you know, you're, you're still within range. I mean, it's still uh, your, uh, successful. Your wife and family live in Festus now? No, my wife is here with me. Oh, good. Uh, good. My daughter is in uh, California. She mm -hmm. lives in San Francisco. Uh, we only have the one. So she'll uh, she'll come back and visit on occasion. She's, uh, but she was she was like dad uh, when she graduated school. She said, "I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going wherever." So she's she's lived in New York and Washington D.C. and then now is in San Francisco. She likes the big cities. That, that's oh, where she wants to be. Her. Yeah. Well, good for her. Yeah. So yeah, when she comes to St. Genevieve, it's the quiet life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is the quiet life. Sidewalks are rolled up at eight o'clock. We're gonna relax and take it easy. And, uh, you know. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what you know white people want to live in, in a, in right. a in And a if you want the nightlife, you can go to Festus or St. Louis or yeah, and, and, Cape or and then Festus didn't. Festus wasn't you know, big on nightlife. I don't. No. I don't remember that. You know, we were living there. If we, if we were going to go out and do something late at night, we were going to go to St. Louis. So you know, we still have that accessibility, and yeah, that was part of it right. too. Is we wanted so we could get to my daughter. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be near a city with a, a major airport, so we right. could fly in when we wanted to, and she could fly in, and we could. Yeah. You're yes. not driving, you know, half a day to. We are to an ideal spot. Yeah. What's really nice about St. Genevieve, though, is the history of it, and that's, you know, Festus has its history. Crystal City, you know, was you know it was fun to get to know that, um, and so she she is a my daughter is a Festus Tiger because uh, she grew up there her whole you know her from age five on, and she graduated from high school there. So you got we got involved in in, in way things are there. So moving to St. Gen. Not having a, a, a daughter in school, right? It's interesting to see the the rivalry between Valley and and St. Jen, uh, and it's you know to hear people talk about you know that that rivalry over the years, you know how that's developed, and you know people you know kind of you know identify themselves right. with their school, the one school or the other. Yeah. But you know when it comes right down to it. Girls marry guys from St. Jen, and the guys marry girls from St. Jen. <laughs> I mean, it's Valley and St. Jen are totally mixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that's it. I think that's what's fun is they, they keep that rivalry. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, even but. even husbands and wives are on different sides of the <laughs> when the game comes. <laughs> Um, yeah. So it was, you know, that it, it's fun to experience that, but I'm, I'm enjoying learning about the history of St. Genevieve. Um, I am. Uh, I volunteered with the uh, a lot of history. Uh, what the heck they call it now? French colonial group. I used to call it the Boldu group. Oh yeah. Up okay. There. And uh, I work in the archives, and I love it. Is that because of the dust, or is it just the? Uh, if you're usually if you're in archives, there's a lot of dust and. No, there's not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's very clean. <laughs> but, but no, the it's we I've been at it now. Another late friend of mine and I, and <clears throat> since oh I guess uh, 2012, and uh, I've been here that since 2012, and uh, I just love it. Oh, the. the I love history anyway, and I love work. Yeah, yeah. And that's the one thing we haven't been able to experience much yet, is going to these different houses and the different museums. Everything's just, again, starting to open up. Yeah, we're uh, not open. Yeah, we went to the new learning museum, the art gallery. It That is going to be fabulous. When they, they were still painting and doing all this oh. stuff. And they make so much out of these big foam blocks you know you can carve into it and oh, yeah. so the rocks are actually made out of foam and painted to look like rocks i mean it is so fascinating that's Where's going to be a city? really neat place for the kids they're going to love it what about dinosaur pardon what are you talking about the oh. learning center the new museum yeah. the, new the museum. dinosaur yeah on, on uh, market well that's a little great yeah. Yeah. I, I, so the art guild has the uh, old place down there in front of church. The it was right next stone to the building. Uh, yeah, it's like next to the uh, chamber of commerce. Yes, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they're on, we're almost finished rehabbing that. It's so beautiful inside. Um, yeah, 
had a chance to walk Game around change. with uh, Gary Nelson. Oh, okay. Uh, he took you in there. Yeah. 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 That's, that's going to be nice. So it, 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 it'll be fun getting a chance to, to, to look at all of that. We've yeah. been involved in uh, working with the National Park Service. I mean, that's, that's an important aspect yes. now that we're, we're wanting to firm up that relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had their walking tours, and that's been interesting to be a part of that, mm -hmm. uh, at least you know, on the planning stage of it. They've been doing the walking tours on Saturday and Sunday, haven't they? I mean, yeah, or Friday, yeah, Saturday, and Friday Sunday. Friday and Saturday. Yeah, I yeah. want to do one of those before they quit. Yeah. Me too. And it's it's an opportunity to get people out. Right. If, if, if people come in and want to see something, you, you can't go in all the houses. Some houses have some limited tours. No, we, we right. Have closed. Okay. And that's, that's, you know, that, that's what a lot, of, a lot of them are doing. You know, even the states kept their buildings closed because you don't want people to be packed in it at this point. Right. Um, so the walking tours is something that when people come in and do some visiting, give them a chance to learn the history. So their 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 visit here is not wasted, where right. they think they came to town uh, to see these these artifacts, to see these old buildings, and don't get a chance to do that. We at least offer something that they right. can come in and enjoy. Besides the shops, besides the restaurants, you know, it's something that you'll, usually if you come to come to town, you want to learn right. something. You want to you want to feel like you're a part of something or you know getting some knowledge so i think that's been a good uh, a good program that the uh that the state really spearheaded uh and the park Service, national park service and then our welcome center has been a part of uh and the french colonial life yes. uh folks have been also following along with that and helping out so and then having the garden open over yeah. there is really really nice too yeah. those are amazing gardens they are, yeah. yeah especially sure. The people that maintain that are just... I think it's mostly all volunteer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. We used to have, uh, there was four of us artists that were in the, where the park supervisor is out in mm -hmm. the valley house down there. And it was amazing, the people that came from oh, different countries. I mean, countries. Wow. I mean, it was so amazing, the people that came. It was... And so much fun talking to them, yeah. you know, the meet, meet and greet them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They had, oh, they had those beautiful painted pictures, you know. And that, there. yeah, and that house yeah. wasn't really open to the public ever until we went in there. And so they got to tour the house. Okay. The gardens were open, but not the house. So they got to tour the house then too, so, yeah. So you work with the Park Service also, besides being the city and the state or, or federal government huh, are working together. Yeah, and, and with great. the county as well. I mean, it's it's that's one of the relationships I think is important for the city is to have those good relationships uh -huh. with all of those agencies because it's important for the city. Uh, for us, we need the tourism. Right. That's what oh, sustains. Yeah. That's, that's one yeah. of the things that sustains the city. Besides, you have good businesses, and a lot of them on 60, 61 and on uh, thirty two. Right. Um, but you still you have this this beautiful downtown area that is uh, is a jewel that people need to see. But you want to give them a reason to come to come to town. Mm -hmm. So working on the tourism part is important, right. and I, and we want to build on that. You know, we hired Toby Kerrig as our new tourism director. Right. Uh, he started today. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> he's uh, and he's, he's nice and he's already had you know a number of ideas. Uh, started researching. Um, we're going to get together tomorrow morning, work on his budget for the next year, and you know, kind of start talking about what we're what we're trying to achieve. What do we want to see? What are the numbers? Uh, how many people are we trying to reach? How do we know when we get people here if that's if, if we're being effective? And I think that's that's one of the important factors that we need to work on for the I next year. I think one thing that uh, the tour, the people that come here to tour, they have such limited time. So they ought to really extend the bus trips, make them longer than what they are day-wise, mm. hour-wise, because they have like time to run in maybe one or two shops and eat lunch, and then they're on the bus and out. Yeah. You know. Okay. So if they, if their time could be, that might be something for Toby to suggest. You know, to make the day trips longer than they 
couple hours they spend here. That way they do maybe three hours, something like that. Most of the trips. And I haven't seen that. See, we haven't had those. Oh, that's right. They haven't. So there was, uh, it's hard to know. I think a couple of weeks ago there were 80 people in Tampa, not on the bus, but there were that many visitors. So it's really. And we have more even open. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and we keep count of how many people come into the Welcome Center. Right, that's who the count came from, I okay. think. That and I know count. not everybody that comes to town goes directly there. Right. But that is one way that we measure how things are, are going. And we've had numbers that we didn't expect. You know, they've been higher than, than what we thought. But I think it's also because people are looking at staycations. They're going to stay close to home. Right. Mm -hmm. Where haven't we gone for a while? Or have we never gone there? Let's go. We can mm -hmm. experience some someplace different. Uh, right. There's fun things to do. There's and good having, food to eat. Having the bed and breakfast and things that we have now, and, and the Audubon Hotel is open now, and um, those are real nice places for the money. Yeah. You know, and real nice things. The food and things, you know. And you can get out. You know, you don't have to drive far. You drive a couple of hours. You can you can right. do a day day trip. Right. Um, if you're a little further away, come in and stay overnight. And you, but you don't have to go that far. A lot of, lot of places around, too. To, yeah. A lot of wineries and things to visit and yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing the people that came here, like from, if they were from Germany or France, you know, they were so interested in all the architecture and just so excited. Oh, what a beautiful town, you know, and just, I mean, all the people that visit here, I haven't heard one say, ooh, what a dumpy town, <laughs> or anything like that. They're always well, we really clean. excited. We are very clean, To too. see. Mm -hmm. yeah, you notice the streets don't have trash on them. People maintain it. Some they cities do. I've been in, I have seen where they haven't maintained in front of their buildings. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that, that is that, that it really is attractive is having plantings, trees, flowers, in a, in a downtown area really adds to the atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the things that, that uh, being part of a, a Main Street program, that's one of, the, one of the things that they bring up is you want to have that, that, that nature, you want to have it in some form or fashion, whether it's just in corner blocks or some sort of, of garden area. But there are so many of them around the, the, the downtown area. There it is. And, and well maintained. And that's all that volunteer. Yeah. With the master but gardeners. Without that, you have a very dry looking space right. mm -hmm. and it doesn't have the life that it does now. Right. Uh, and it's nice to see that. You, know, you walk around and, and yeah. it's going to change as the season goes along. Uh, but it's, it's, it's beautiful to see that. And again, you're right, the volunteers, that's amazing the amount of time that they put in. Exactly. Saying, I don't put that much time in my yard. <laughs> they, uh, they I have do. The, <laughs> See, there, <laughs> they have the, uh, uh, garden walks and everything, too, that are so beautiful. Yeah. And uh, it's just. Well, I think you've got, you, you, you encourage the, the building owners uh, or the renters of the, you know, whoever's, you know, the stores, they do their own, too. Right. Because they see what everybody else is doing, well, they want to have it look as nice as well. Right. And they'll put something out. It, it may be just a small basket. But little flowers are pretty. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Does. it dresses up everything. Uh, and, and I'm anxious to important. see what kind of uh, what the county does to enhance that parking lot. I think they were supposed to build something, but I don't know I got what they two, decided on. Two dirt areas that uh, yeah, they've got some topsoil in there. Yeah, I don't. They haven't done anything else with it, but I think it takes a little time too. Oh, definitely. Well, they yeah. just so, did, they yeah they just put the asphalt on that. But they so. really needed the parking lot. That was really yeah. Oh, yes. well needed. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame. Especially on that, Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame that your first year here and we didn't have the short of bath. There's yeah. so many things that uh, you don't know what's going on until that happens. <laughs> yeah, I, we have experienced the Jour de Fed. My wife was a frequent flyer, so to speak, and came down here quite often when, when, they, when it was going on. And she dragged me down a year. And when it was so hot, um, you just wish you weren't here. <laughs> Sunday morning, we came down early, and we hit what we could. And when it started warming up, we went home. Yeah. <laughs> we stopped and ate lunch first, but then we went home. Yeah. Uh, that's what most of the people that live here do. <laughs> but, Sit downtown early or run home. Yeah, yeah. But it was it was still enjoyable, and there was a lot going on that day. So, yeah. 
It is a, it is a nice event. And it used to be really, really big. You know, they had like yeah. booths everywhere, uptown yeah. and all down. I, I mean, it was mark one time. It was huge. Yeah. I think the one thing we missed was walking down to the, the Jurdefet Park area. Yes. We we stayed down on uh, downtown area. We hadn't ventured uh, far enough uh, to the east, back toward the river. So we missed those booths. Yeah. But there's still a lot of good neat things back on, in the Jurdefet grounds. Yeah. They have a lot of neat wood carvers, and they have that uh, and I tractor think that was, that's. Hit and miss tractor with popcorn. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I know it was a tough decision to make whether to do it or not. And I, right. you know, I, I commend them for waiting, weighing the issues, and right. then saying, "Hey." And this it's a is new bunch this year too. Uh, the other girls have done it so many years; they kind of found new people yeah. to take their place. So it's best probably that they did cancel it for this year. Yeah. Uh, because there are other festivals that are being canceled as well, and we don't have fireworks this year. Uh, it's just everybody's canceling those, those fireworks activities. It's like, well, we need to follow along because we don't know what things are going to be like. In the fall, who knows and, what it's going to be and like. Then, yeah, then maybe there'll be some festivals going on. Maybe something will happen. Yeah. Uh, they by then, thinking, yeah. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, you know, we have to be cautious. Right. So, yeah, we're going to miss a lot of the festival activities that, oh that they gosh. go on. And those are good money makers for the clubs yeah. Yeah. and for the city. Yeah. Yeah. But you can always do a farmer's market on Saturday. So yes. Oh, yes. My wife has been frequenting that. So yeah. she's getting I think she was down there today, vegetables. too, until noon, down on Savannah's lot. Oh, okay. She had on Facebook that she had so many vegetables that she was going to be down there today. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. She's been going down to the Knights of Columbus on Saturday. Right. Right. Farmers market. Yeah. So wow, she's yeah. waiting for the fresh tomatoes. That's first of July. Once that happens, and it's bacon, bacon tomato sandwiches. Oh, we yes. skip the lettuce. Yeah. I don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> just, just tomato sandwiches at the all and right. Tomato, yeah, there you go. Nice tomatoes and mayonnaise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we have a lot going. So we're working on budget now. We'll be working on that for the next four months. That's always one of the more difficult uh, aspects of being a, a board member yeah. uh, is trying to figure out the numbers. Uh, and that will. That so will with the taxes down this year, that's going to affect it too, huh? We're somewhat. Yeah, it will. It affects us right now, and it will affect us. You know what we're estimating we'll see in the next year. Or so right. um, I, I don't think we're not going to bounce back immediately. Uh, again, oh, we've no. sustained ourselves pretty well. So we know we'll probably be okay, if, you know, for the next year. It's not like we're going to have to shut down any programs or, or stop anything, but we just need to be conservative as to what we right. what we spend on, and watch it closely again. Um, and that's one of the things that we've talked about, and I know the board agrees. Um, so we've 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 got an understanding, and I think we're working well together, and, and that process will go smoothly. Uh, it, it has not always been a smooth process. It's not always an easy process. Uh, because when you're dealing with numbers, and we're dealing with about six million dollars, it's uh, it, it can be tough. Really, it's just a bunch of zeros, you know, right. the same as what you had to deal with in your checkbook. Right. It's just add yeah, more zeros. You got to make those zeros go out to all these little bills. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a few more bills. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but but you still had to you know still had to balance in the city. The same I'm way. not talking about you guys. You know. Oh yeah. yeah. We don't know all of the different places. I know we hear about it, you hear like when you're gonna buy a piece of equipment or fix a road or you know, something like that. But uh, we don't really hear all of the little <coughs> dots and dashes there. As long as it goes smoothly, that's what we wanna make sure. We, have, we, we know we have to operate daily. Uh, we have to keep the main <coughs> services uh, right. available. I just wish the allergies quit. And most of it <laughs> is, um, if you listen to the meetings, yeah, the ultimate meetings, yeah. you can pick up basically everything they do. Because yep. they hardly ever have a secret meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Or a closed meeting or whatever they call it. <laughs> I think a couple times they have, but not, well, yeah. not for something that didn't really concern the citizens that much anyway. So. Right, yeah. right. Well, and eventually, even with and the closed... And that openness is good. Yes. Yeah. Even with the closed meeting, it, it, it allows a chance maybe to, to talk openly about something, but it's going to eventually have to be... 
right. uh, in an open meeting because you right. have to make a decision and the decision has to be where everybody can see what the decision is and who voted for it right who voted against it right. um, and I think that's that's the one thing this board has really wanted to to keep going with and, and, and is, is an open meeting is an open mm -hmm. process so people know what's going on so you know what your government's doing um, everybody talks about transparency well, that's the one way to do it you, exactly you, you don't close yeah. unless you unless social really media important. is really good in that aspect yeah you know and even our channel 991 that we're on now too uh, they replay you know you can go back a ways and listen to the meetings because right. they're recorded and they have repeats of them or you can go to youtube and find them most times they might fall asleep, but if that's what, that's what you enjoy doing, I mean, that may be your, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes those meetings can be, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, you, if you listen a little bit, <laughs> you think, okay, I'm tired of this. <laughs> and then you go away. <laughs> fast forward, fast forward. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. So that's my, uh, that's my history of, I've uh, been in government for about 25 years. Uh, and enjoy it. I, you know, I enjoy the people. We've got a very good staff. You should be very proud of your uh, of the workers that have worked their way into their positions that they are here. Uh, they know their stuff, and that that has helped me to transition into the job easier. Um, they you know, they they don't have to have me over their shoulders telling them what to do. Right. They know what to do. And uh, there's things that need to be fixed. You, know, you, you, you oh, well, the, always. Yeah. Yeah, most of them have been here for quite a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah quite a while. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Sue has. <laughs> and you miss yes. Mary Ann. <laughs> or did you meet her before? Mm, no, Mary Ann Otto, oh, she passed she away something. a couple years ago. She, she used to sit here. She was okay. the, yeah, she was the city collector for our, how long? Oh my gosh. And forever. <laughs> <laughs> Jolliest. When I first moved here, she was single. <laughs> Jolliest person you ever saw. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it's not, I'm, she I was may a have jewel. come across her at some point, being up in Festus, but I don't, uh, I didn't, I just didn't, I didn't remember. Her, but right. And, uh, when yeah. they asked me to yeah. join them up here, somebody said, oh, you're going to replace Marianne Otto. I said, oh, no way. Uh, no, nobody no, can no, no, replace no Mary. <laughs> she took hers with her. <laughs> yeah, she would bring Easter. We had bunnies hopping all over oh, the God. place. And Christmas, oh, we my had gosh. hats and all kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, she was, she liked the holidays for sure. That's neat. And her house was the same way. Awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I she did. she decorated her house the same way she brought stuff here. And she decorated school the same way. Yeah, the school, yeah. I was a room with her one year. Ah, Several okay. Years. And that, those are the kind of people I enjoy. Exactly. I mean, we, we want to have fun working. I mean, it's, yeah. it's serious business what we do, but right. we've got to laugh. We've got to have a good time. That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't make this strict. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> I picked up on that. Did you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, can be serious. I mean, we yeah. can, when there is, it, seri we have serious subjects many, yeah. many times, but then again, <laughs> gotta laugh. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the one thing we do, we, you know, we try to do well. That's, uh, mm -hmm. my, that fits my personality. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, people come in and it's an open door policy in my office. So, you know, we'll stop in, we'll talk. Eventually, it may get around to something funny. We, we talk about what's going on in the city. You know, we'll talk baseball, football, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it does, it's not always just business. It's, you know, we, I want to get to know the people that I work with. Right. I want to enjoy their company. Mm -hmm. um, and I have, a, you know, yeah, I have a good here. So, yeah. yeah. And also the people you work for. Yeah. The people in the town, you know. And all like that, you get to know them, and they're wonderful people. Yeah. They're good people. Yeah, all 4,400 of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 4,401. See, somebody knows the number. Well, I wasn't we can't, here when they took it. <laughs> we can't hit 5,000 5, for nothing. <laughs> If we only get to 5,000, we can have so many neat grants, but it never hits it. I don't think, I don't think we've ever had that many, have we? 
Not that no, I can't remember. Unless somebody had a litter of pups or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like down over in Illinois that I come from. We you I never. don't think we're at 5,000 yet. Yeah. yeah, we might be. Nashville, Edgar Springs was 200. There's two yeah. Nashville, <laughs> Illinois and Tennessee. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and there's probably more than that that you don't yeah. know of. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is another one I know of. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the one from Illinois. There you go. So, I guess. Good history. <laughs> is there anything else that you wanted to bring up or anything? I don't think so. I think uh, just. I hope to see people out and about. Uh, we'll do what we can to, to bring in uh, the tourists this year. Uh, we'll keep the toilets flushing and the uh, water running. <laughs> and the streets, we'll keep working on the streets. We got some major water line projects uh, that will be coming up later this year. We'll start them in a couple of months. Um, so it's on Cedar Lane. We finished that one up. Fourth uh, Street and Biltmore. And I think there's three others that we're working on. So there'll be some torn up streets for a while. But Some of those pipes are really old. Well, they're old and they're old. They're, it's an old transite pipe or an asbestos pipe that we're oh, trying to get rid okay. of. And they're, not, they're not dangerous. It's just they're old and they're brittle. Yeah. Um, tear them up or tear up the street, pull the pipes out, put in plastic, and you don't have to worry about it for mm -hmm. another 50, 60 years. How many years is this supposed to last, the plastic? I'm saying 50 or 60 oh, before something it's... happens to it, uh, but I mean it should be, they should be forever. This, uh, mm -hmm. is this the, a black plastic that you're using or white? It's usually a blue for water. Well, a dark, a dark color though. Uh, um, the reason I say that, we, uh, where I used to live, we, we didn't even have running water until about 67, but uh, they first put in the white lines and it didn't take long before we put in dark. They were black. They had to be black. Something about the uh, tree's roots weren't as liable to grow through them. Hmm, I don't know. Uh, it I sounds like they put in ductile iron instead of the uh, plastic. So it might have been something with the, uh, the connections in those white plastic lines. But uh, yeah. ours are usually blue. Um, I don't know what, what they, what's, I don't know what, the, there's a model number, you know, it's like a, C900 or, um, or there's some other numbers, mm -hmm. but they should be, not you put them quick, in, they should be solid. Not as quick as to have the roots grow into them and things I imagine. There shouldn't be anything because they're glued together and tight well, uh, with gasket. Well, the roots didn't come through the, like that, they went through the pipe. Yeah, see that, that's. See, not, not any connections. That was sealed. They, they actually broke into the pipe itself. That was probably cheap plastic. <laughs> Yeah, I've never yeah. never heard of I tree roots getting in plastic. Yeah. I never did either. Uh -uh. Yeah. And, I had it. and that <laughs> stuff's pretty thick too. Like, yeah, good stuff for the city. Almost anyway. a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's this thick. Yeah, they're, they're high pressure lines, so I, I back in sixty seven I guess we put in what we had. <laughs> yeah, and stuff probably wasn't as good then. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. They, but they, had, they hadn't perfected put plastic. Put in the other kind yeah. Yeah. within yeah. a few years. We had clay pipe in ours when we first bought our house. Okay. But well, that got, yep. the tree roots were yeah, they packed in that. Yeah. yeah, so usually in houses it's going to be copper for water, and it was a clay plastic or something that was called Orangeburg. I still got copper. Okay. My water pipe, because that's an old house. It was yeah. late, late I think 1800s. I still have a couple of lead pipes in mine. Short ones, like that one. You may be galvanized. They may not be lead. They may be galvanized. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's a pretty old house. Yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've, I've been through a number of houses where, you know, it's, they've had galvanized pipes. Galvanized would get the sediments inside of it, and eventually they would just close off. When you had no water pressure. You could, uh, could, people couldn't figure out why. So maybe that's what's the matter with my water pressure. Huh? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <Good day. laughs> Yeah, we got, I think uh, there's only a couple of those in one place in the basement by my washing machine. So, ah, yeah. not the intake, that's pretty new. Because yeah. we didn't have water up there until, well, we had it for years, but when we first moved out there, it was cistern water. Oh, stinky I've heard of cistern water. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. And nothing but bleach water. <laughs> That's the only thing it's good for. <laughs>
yeah, that was a that was a horror. <laughs> the cistern wasn't deep enough, and it was the water would spoil, and it was. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Glad you came yeah. on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. The invite. The invite and have me in. Uh, Anytime yeah. that you have something that you think was is of yeah. interest, speak up. Okay. Yeah. An old iris, or you went it through. Well, I thought they you might just crash the party and come in when you guys are. Well, that would be that fine too. too. That would be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah you can tell Sue when you want to be on, and Marianne can pass it on. We can get yeah. it on the on the city television. Yeah. <laughs> get it in the paper. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I know Mark. Mark Evans uh, uh -huh. bumped into him because he covers the, the city, uh, and I see him at different meetings. Uh, and then they'll have somebody new coming in. They'll be taking, so Mark moved up, and then we got somebody new coming in. Oh, really? Another reporter. Okay. Oh. So. Well, they did, they advertised for one. Yeah. Well. What you look at? I have a message. We have a reunion on Saturday, and everybody's getting sick on us. Uh -oh. <laughs> and that's not good. There's another oh. cousin that's sick. Yeah. So family reunion? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 So she's the second one now. That's. Uh oh. Yeah. So that's four of them that are not doing very well. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. that may be postponed for a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Either that, or there'll be very few there, and we'll just have to yell at each other across the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, we're in a great big building, so. It don't matter. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Well, yeah. Well, thank you for the invite. I, I appreciate you having well, me on. And we're happy that you said yes. 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 Thank say, you. I can say hi to you know how many people you have watching that I haven't said hi to yet. We so. wish we had an idea. They did have when we first started. Didn't they have a counter when we first started? And then for I don't know if it cost too much or uh, or if the program they changed didn't have the counter on it. But I know some of the guys that were in the service overseas, they would watch us on YouTube. Oh, there you yeah. go. Yeah. yeah, there was, how many were that? Remember? It's been several years ago that some of them commented that, you know, they really liked, their parents told us they were watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe two or three of them, wasn't it? Um, it wasn't a whole lot, but. It was about six yeah. of them there at one time. Was it? Yeah. yeah. We, we was coined you know, to 10 there at one time. Get a chance to hear what's going on at home. That's probably what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If you get homesick. This is a way to. And uh, then we it. have pretty interesting guests. You know, like we've had people that have had Alzheimer's, and they were get in the first stages of it, and, uh, and MS. Support them. The Alzheimer's. MS and uh, what else? There was another. Anyway, it was people brought that were head of these groups brought we had, their. We had somebody here with their, their heart. Their what? With the heart problem. Yes. Yeah. Heart. Oh, okay. So they they kind of informed. Uh, I thought the MS and the. Uh, what was that other one? The Alzheimer's. No, besides that, we had another one that's the muscular. Anyway, the the patients actually told how they noticed their symptoms and what they did about it as it progressed. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. So that was really interesting coming out of the mouths of the people that were experiencing the disease. Very good information for people to know. Right. So they understand right. What, what goes on in somebody's And then the, the lady that um, did the Alzheimer's, she was, um, her husband had, she had taken care of her husband with Alzheimer's. Yeah. So she decided, you know, people need help. So she started doing that. Good. And then she uh, talked about it because she knew all about it because she lived through it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I, those in, those uh, are interesting. Then we've had school kids on here and, uh, and fiddle players. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. we have a. Oh yeah, one we've of the guys on has the table. <laughs> <laughs> one of the guys yeah. has a. That, I've heard some board meetings that end up like that, but that's a different yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the guys that. Um, lives here in town, he teaches. And so he brings his students on when they're red, I mean, when he thinks they can play enough. He's got um, yeah. one little guy from out Bloomsdale. He's super good, yeah. 
-hmm. and then the little, right. you know, all ages. But he's not been well, has he? Who? Quentin. <coughs> no, Quentin has. Yeah, he hasn't been well, the guy, so we haven't had him for quite a while. That's right. Right. You usually have them at but it's, Christmas. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. But it's interesting. I mean, the program is really interesting if people are interested <laughs> in the topic that the people come and talk about. So. Yeah. yeah. Try to get a little bit of everything. Yeah. Everything that's going on in the, in the city that people would be interested in. Yeah. So. Find yeah, out things they may not know about. Right. Yeah. And we've had a few businesses come and talk about their business and what they sell and bring examples and stuff. We have the health awesome. department come in and mm -hmm. give us all the different things that they work with and everything. And okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah they've, had, they've had the tough life. Boy, they the have. Oh my goodness, yeah. Mm. And the extension office, too. <coughs> they do an awful lot. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. I guess we'll talk about food now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all of, most of you people out there probably know that the organization <laughs> named Heavenly Hope, they have adapted, I forgot the name of it, but it's a government program, Farmers to Family or something like that. Anyway, they give food boxes every every week actually they have two programs they do boxes on mondays and they do them also on wednesdays so we are going to tell you a few tips what you can do with some of the products that are in the boxes we have um, the box that they gave um, on this past monday thank you you have a good evening yeah, thanks for coming um, there were blueberries, and everybody kind of knows what to do with blueberries. You can do about everything oh, with that. You not can, everything. And lettuce, romaine lettuce, cabbage, celery, um, potatoes, apples, carrots, oranges, lemons. Eggplants. Yeah, there, there was a box at one point that had eggplant and yeah, that. Yeah, at one time they did. Yeah, and what else has been in them? Have you get the boxes every once in a while? You don't get them. Um, anyway, we're just going to give you a few, throw out a few tips what you can do with it. So what have you got, nothing. Jean? <laughs> you have nothing. <laughs> well, I've got all what it says here, but uh, this is a very old book, but it does give... What did you have? Okay, what most have? of the stuff that is in the boxes are fruits and vegetables and produce. And then they have uh, a website you can go to. The girl at the extension office was very kind and gave me this. And it's a great website. I went on it uh, this afternoon to see what they have. They have uh, it set up really nice. And they're bringing out a book also. But they have this site. It's HTTP semicolon forward dash forward dash seasonal and simple dot information if you go to that website they have like uh, everything under the sun and it's all in alphabetical order so say if you would get apples you can get tons of ideas what to do with apples from this website and the same way with every vegetable that's in that box. They have, they have uh, suggestions of what. And they don't just have one recipe. There's like several of them. So that is a great website to go to. Anybody that gets a box and you have so much food you just don't really know what to do with it. Uh, it's HTTP semicolon forward slash forward slash seasonal and simple dot information I not information info so that uh, you can go there okay Mary Ann what kind of products do you want to tell them about to our tips or whatever well I got I picked up a bunch of recipes I picked up I, I got one that was a skillet <laughs> recipe and you can throw everything into it you can throw cabbage green peppers celery tomatoes you put all you can put all that together and I bet onions too huh onions yep you can put all of your all of your vegetables actually all of them in the skillet and you put a cup of oil a fourth cup of oil or seasoning 
or bacon drip. If you have bacon drips. No, oh, that's good, yeah. Yeah, you can put that on there and sugar and salt and pepper and you cook that, you cover and cook that for 20 minutes and that thing, and the tomatoes you put in last. But you can put tomatoes it. in it, but you can put all the rest of this stuff in there and cook it and then put your tomatoes in the last. And it's really, it's, it's a skillet, vegetables. It's wonderful. Right. I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a little bit of vegetables in it. Yeah. It's and, pretty good. Yeah. It's On that same good. note, you can also do the same thing Marianne just said and put it in the oven and bake it for mm -hmm. 20 minutes. You can throw potatoes in there. And you can put uh, the onions and the tomatoes when you stir it all together, then that's what gives it the really good flavor. And you just do oil over the top of it when you put it in the oven and salt and pepper it. And then when you take it out, you can add any kind of seasoning that you want, garlic Well, you can take You anything. can take this all and put it in an oven and you can take a breadcrumbs or you can take uh, what my grandmother used to do she used to crush up crackers and she'd put crackers on it and then lay cheese on top of it Ooh, i bet that's good and then she'd bake that yeah. oh my god yeah and it was good yeah. <laughs> okay so, something that i imagine you can do with this because i do it with a lot of stuff at my house uh, let it cool thoroughly take off just certain what you would eat for a meal put it in a plastic container and freeze it. Right. Right. But the one thing that I prefer to do then, when I take it out of the freezer, I want it to be thoroughly defrosted, and then I like to put it in the oven to warm it instead of the microwave. Mm -hmm. But the microwave's pretty handy there. Yeah. You can do that <laughs> too. Is, yeah. Know? But uh, something yeah. really good like Marianne uh, explained there, Oh, that would taste good. Stick it in the oven with maybe a little extra cheese or something. Mm -hmm. and just okay. stripe you some cheese across there. And, and then for good. green beans and carrots and uh, cauliflower, broccoli, um, and maybe uh, some other see. things. You can take and bring up, like the carrots, you could cut them, peel them, and then cut them like coins, maybe a uh, quarter inch slices through the whole carrot and then you bring the bring the water to the boil don't put uh, salt in it just bring the water to a boil drop the carrots in it for three minutes only three minutes take them out dump them in a colander or pick them out with a scoop and put them in a colander let them cool completely and then put those in a plastic bag and you can freeze them. Yes. Then you take out just the amount that you want to eat, and they keep for a pretty long time, and they're not very well cooked when you put them in there, so they taste fresh when you put them in a, I always cook mine in a pan with a little butter. I just put butter in the pan, put them in there frozen, put a lid on them, and probably five minutes or so they're finished. Green beans, you can do the same thing too. Uh, but they'll probably have to cook a little bit longer. No, you and just those, blanch your green bean. You just yeah, but I'm saying afterward. You oh, have after, to cook yeah, them yeah, cook them. Yeah, they're all done. the blanching yeah. is like three minutes, and that's mm -hmm. plenty for yes. the cauliflower, the broccoli, any of that, any of the vegetables. Three minutes is plenty, and they should taste pretty fresh. Now, I think the um, cauliflower. Someone said I have never tried doing it ca to the cauliflower. But someone said when you freeze it and then you thaw it, you almost have to use it in a cooked dish because it gets uh, mushy. Yeah, it gets yeah, kind of mushy. Potatoes will too. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then uh, potatoes. Oh my goodness, there is so much to do with potatoes. What do you do with yours, Jean? Eat them. <laughs> Jean's not very helpful because she don't like to cook. No. <laughs> <laughs> if I've got leftover mashed potatoes, <laughs> I've got true. leftover mashed potatoes, I make potato pancakes oh, out of yeah. them. Yeah. Or I make cream of potato soup. Mm -hmm. And that's real simple. You just put butter and salt and pepper and milk in that and thin it and cook it. And if you like it, I like cheese. I love cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I throw some cheese in there once in a while and a little bit of parsley. It, it's it's delicious, it's good, yeah. but you can use mashed potatoes. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah. There's so many and different the ways. bags and these boxes that you guys are going to get, 
usually has a good quantity of potatoes. So you can do fried potatoes, make French fries, make potato chips, make scalloped uh, potatoes, scallop potatoes, potatoes and bake them and mash them. And if you want to make soup from fresh potatoes, just chop them up in little bitty squares, mm -hmm. maybe a mm -hmm. half inch mm -hmm. squares, and they'll cook really fast. And you just boil them till they're soft, and then you smash them, and then you can add your milk and your salt and pepper and butter and butter, and, and you'll have a nice soup. And I tell you, your, your spice cabinet is wonderful. You can throw in spices in almost anything, Especially any spice. garlic seasoning. Oh, I use a lot of garlic. Oh, yeah, I use garlic fresh onion. onion. Yeah. <laughs> and onions. You yes. also get onions in this box, and I even had uh, garlic. Uh, the last box that I got even had garlic in it. So you can do fresh, I mean, chop the garlic, run it through the press, use it fresh, and just throw all your vegetables on a pan and cook them, and then just divide them in little servings, and you can keep most of the foods will stay nice and fresh in your refrigerator in these plastic bags for at least four days. Uh, some of it you can maybe do five, but I, I usually get rid of stuff if I don't eat it in four days. I bought a roast and I took all the carrots and gobs of potatoes and onions and I made a pot roast. And so I had enough for um, four meals out of that, big heavy <laughs> meals. I mean, I could have made seven or eight meals, but <laughs> I really like pot roast. I love I love vegetables, so I I kind of cleaned up on the carrots and the, made them in like in four four meals. But there's so much you can do with these boxes and feed your family healthy. The the lettuce. The romaine lettuce, there's nothing like oh, romaine no. lettuce. Slice it in little, well, maybe inch, every inch all the way up. Just turn your head sideways and chop it, and then go back the other way and maybe twice hit it. And then you have these nice little pieces of lettuce, and you can put in there, oh my gosh, you can put any kind of, vet, you know, any kind of ca cabbage or uh, apples, blueberries, apricots, any kind of fruit is delicious with that, with that uh, romaine lettuce. Anything is good with romaine. I it agree. is. Yes. And you can, yes. now for the dressings, I don't even really use a dressing. I take mayonnaise, real mayonnaise, and I put a dollop on there and I just stir it up and it mixes with some of the water that you've rinsed that your lettuce hasn't all the way uh -huh. Uh -huh. dried. It mixes with that water and it makes a nice creamy uh, dressing and it's not uh, not tangy or anything it just has a really nice flavor and I also of course put the garlic on it because I like the garlic <laughs> sprinkles I buy a bottle of that garlic seasoning at Country Mart or at uh, well I think all the stores have it even Dollar Tree I think has yes. it and you have just you ever tried the fresh garlic in the jars no I have not well, you want to, like with your roast or something, a little bit of that fresh on top on of it. On top of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I like <laughs> onions in there, too. Yes, yeah. yes. And definitely. the onions that you get in this <clears throat> box, they are really good onions. They're not the kind that makes your eyes water. They have a really mild flavor. So they're, these vegetables in this box are so good. Um, so everybody out there is uh, entitled to a box. It doesn't matter if you're... Where do you get it? What your income is. Um, we're going to have next week, we're going to have the girls from Heavenly Hope come on, and they'll tell you all about how to get a hold of these boxes, where they deliver. They deliver like all over the county, and they have pickup sites sometimes where you can pick them up. So they go to Bloomsdale, they go to um, St. Mary's, they go to St. Genevieve, several places in St. Jen. And then uh, if you can't get out to get a box, you can call them and they'll bring them to your house. They so will. where I live over there, you know, so, the, the yeah, older so, folks up there, right? they deliver them up there. Yeah. Oh, they do? So we hope that some of our tips that we gave tonight will help you guys use your boxes and make use of, make use of all the products in the box because it's so fresh. These vegetables are so fresh compared to what comes in the store, mm -hmm. you know, because they come 
right after they're picked, they come to you. So, Mary, you got any more? Yeah, I found a recipe for a cabbage, scallop, scalloped cabbage. It's real simple. You just uh, let's see. You put the cabbage in a saucepan, pour milk over it till it's covered. Remove it from the heat when tender. Do you slice in. it up? Mm-hmm. You slice, slice it like slaw, maybe? Yeah, you could slice it like slaw. And I was just, gonna say if you put the milk over the whole head of cabbage, that'll be it's a not lot of work. milk. No, you'll <laughs> have to you'll have to slice it. Okay. You'll have to cut it up, and you pour milk over it until it's it till it's completely covered, and then you remove it from the heat when it's tender. Then you put in the put it in a buttered casserole dish, and you put that crushed crackers on top of it, and your butter, and if you're like me, you throw cheese on, and put it in the oven for about ten minutes. And that makes a good casserole. That's something different that I didn't know you could do. With cabbage. That is good. That sounds good. It sounds good. Right. And I, I thought, well, cabbage you just got fried or stewed or something yeah. else. But when I came across yeah. this, I thought, well, that's different. Yeah, milk with cabbage. That, that, well, that'd be kind of like mayonnaise, probably. Yeah. Same different. It's that like mayonnaise, a, yeah. too, because I take my seasonings and dump it in my mayonnaise. Yeah. That you have in your, anyway, in right. your other. Right. stuff for ice, put the seasoning yeah. in there. Another thing I do with the cabbage is I, like <coughs> that, I slice it really thin and I put it in a skillet and, and I put it. butter in it and a little bit of water and just cook it until it's soft. You have to be really careful that you don't burn it though. I've already, <laughs> <laughs> I've already done that too. I've just that. kind of watch it and it, it doesn't take cabbage <laughs> very long to cook when, no, you, it when it's sliced really thin. And also you can Go on and slice that cabbage like slaw and put it in a dish or a bag and it keeps for I did that and it, I think I used it like three days later I was gonna and say it was days. still good and crispy yeah I and it, it three days. yeah it was very good so you can make your own bag of slaw <laughs> or cabbage whatever uh, so just be creative and if you got any suggestions Next week, while the girls are here mm -hmm. talking Excuse about the boxes, me, call no. us. Our number Iris, is. They, we won't be here next week. Not next week. I'm <laughs> so, I'm sorry. It's the eighth of July. Yes. Why do I keep saying next week? I right. guess because we've been gone for so long. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, <we do laughs> July the eighth, and not next week. We won't be on. But uh, actually, I think the girls are going to put this on their Heavenly Hope site. Some of our suggestions, so you can call. Our number, if I remember correctly, is 7679. Charlie, can you put the number up on there? I forgot what it was. I think it's... I think he just did. Is that it? Okay. It's 7... It's 7-6 seven, something, I think, or 7 something. Seven, and, oh, there it is. They, he put it on the screen for you guys. So, Nick, the July the 8th, if any of you have any questions of what to do with what's in your box or you have any really good suggestions of what to do with the food, give us a call at that number and you can talk to the girls live because we do a live show on the second and the fourth Friday of every... Uh, oh my goodness, let me start all over. I've been gone for so long my brain got fried. <laughs> We lost okay. it. <laughs> it's time for us to give, get our minds working again, for sure. Our mind, anyway. <laughs> okay. We are on the second and the fourth Wednesday at 7 o'clock on Channel 991. So just call us and give us your suggestions. And uh, we hope you tune in on the 8th of July and uh, enjoy what the girls have to have to tell you and again that um, app that you can find well you can do an app at seasonal and simple that's an app that you can download on your phone but you can do the um, uh, online see all the si all the receipt recipes online at http semicolon forward slash far forward slash seasonal s e a S O N A L and simple S I M P L E dot info I N F O and that is a University of Missouri extension 
That's from their, uh, their girl gave it to me. And they also <clears throat> are gonna have a book that's called Seasonal and Simple, so that'll be out soon. So anyway, thank you guys for tuning in tonight, and we're really happy to be back here. Uh, We'll get our act Doing together. our thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll remember what day of the week it is next time. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> well, 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 one of us will think of yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thanks a lot for tuning in. And uh, I guess we'll talk to you on the 8th again. Yes, thank you all for watching. <laughs> yeah, and thanks for watching. And we'll, we'll be talking to you later. Bye-bye.